you just skipped a year in there. <laughs> So, th these are real stories from when I was a teacher, and I have changed the names of the students to protect their uh, anonymity. Yeah. Even if, if you knew them, it would be a really long uh, moment. So, I have a first year. I'm Luke! So, uh, yeah, I'm here to talk about my teaching is rad. So, I spent, uh, well, first, I designed this to look like high school freshman presentation, so I had to sit through it for like seven years, so you guys get to sit through some really horrible <laughs> Teaching is rad, so you might be asking, man, after seven years, Luke, you had it all, right? The high school teacher, you were the assistant wrestling coach, the assistant bass fishing team coach, the Super Smash Brothers Club sponsor, you drove a 98 Ford Ranger, you had a hundred and forty Though teaching often can be like Napoleon conquering Europe, but instead of Europe, we're beating the shit out of ignorance. Usually what happens is you end up feeling like drunk defeated Napoleon, um, and it ends with a day where you have to make a really uncomfortable, awkward phone call to a parent. Uh, first lesson, uh, Nikita Khrushchev, right, premier of the Soviet Union, he looks exactly like him. Uh, when you bring that up to students, uh, one student in particular, uh, we'll call that student Will Zalecki, decided to take this joke really, really far. So, um, for the rest of the year, Will decided that he was going to find everybody that looked just like me. This includes Grover, the borderline war criminal William to Pink's assertion. who decided to do a research project on parental advisory and censorship and use it. Freshman kid, really impressive topic. We go over their slides, we edit, we make sure things are appropriate, on point. I mean, this presentation was gonna be great. The kid called an audible. So last minute, there's a change, and this kid decides to play a minute and a half clip of Peaches and Cream. They were engaged, but they also snitch, right? So kids, they tell everybody everything. So sure enough, somebody told, and I get a really uncomfortable phone call from a mother who had to now, I have to explain how I didn't know, but yes, I know what pieces of cream was, but I, I swear I didn't plan this. She was far from pleased. Uh, next, we have a kid, uh, we'll call him Caleb Herod, now, rule number one as a teacher, never touch the bathroom pass hand to hand to bathroom to hand to hand. That's where the plague fucking is. So, <laughs> Caleb goes to the bathroom, turns around, quickly returns, a little bit alarmed. And I say, Caleb, everything okay? Caleb says, um, there was a pink plate with poop in the bathroom. It's not a sentence I'm really familiar with, right? So I had to repeat it, and I had to ask, Caleb, is that your poop? <laughs> Caleb admittedly denies it, so, um, anyway, long story short, what we find out is a kid that actually was in the stall, another kid was videoing underneath and watched a poop go onto a plate, and then this was when there was vines, so then it was all over vine. That's another weird call that had to redeem. Yes, poop, plate, in a bathroom. <laughs> guys, this is teaching, this is real teaching, so. Um, have you guys been to Keller? It's like pretty big fucking deal, so. <laughs> Write on the walls in Keller, right? It's a big deal because you're way smarter writing on a wall that's whiteboard rather than a whiteboard. It's just anyway, our school paid a lot of money to do that. So we have another student. Uh, we'll call her Taylor Griffin. We give a kid a whiteboard marker. They just can't help themselves. Right? Taylor, they just be real funny. I'm gonna draw this wiener on the wall. Okay. Taylor, erase it. Knowing full well, Taylor didn't write on the whiteboard wall. Taylor wrote on just the wall. So Taylor race, we're a, we're a big fan of you know, natural consequences, so I'm not saying, you know, whatever, it says, well, you're going to have to go to the custodian and explain, I need a magic eraser to erase and scrub the eight winner off the wall. So, the punishment fits a crime, yet again, very uncomfortable phone call to have with the parents, 
yes, your kid drew a wiener on the wall and it's there forever. <laughs> around for like teacher meetings and everything, right? You can still see the thing for years. So, final exam day. It's like heaven for teachers because it's silent, you're done planning. Every kid has to sit there for an extended period of time. You can't talk. Um, it's just like school year's almost over. I mean, everybody's in a great position here. Final exam day. Um, our final exam for one of my freshman classes was rudely interrupted by what I can describe as a tuba-esque fart. Right? I mean, <laughs> Get back to your test. It happens yet a second time. At this point, I know the culprit. We'll call him Jalal Yunus. I say, Jalal, hey man, you really gotta knock this off. Like, this is problematic. You're causing some issues. Looks me in the eyes. The 13 year old kid says, There is no way that you can prove that was me. Touche, kid. tournament and I'm driving the awesome mini jam bus and there's a kid who decided on the way back at one of our stops he's going to eat as much as he possibly can, right? We'll call this kid Garrett. <laughs> so Garrett, you, the, French, the Frenchman, um, at some point, ten minutes after we have left a rest stop, right? Ten minutes, picks his head up, uh, Carmen, I think we got to stop. You just stop, Garrett. It's, no, I, I think I'm grabbing my pants. <laughs> Kid sitting next to him. No, coach, he's really kind of his pants. <laughs> he is talking to me and actively taking a dump in his pants. So we pull over as quick as we can, just like LD. He goes to change his pants, gives me his other pants. He tries to bring the bag of crap pants back on the bus. Oh, throw that out and no one can watch that. Anyway, that was by far the worst phone call ever. It was not my fault. I swear we tried to stop, but yeah. So anyway. Kids would be like waiting and let their other kid go out, and he would go pee on the tree and then like come back in. So that's not like really hyper disgusting. If you could ever sit down on level with a kid, like why? You're not gonna find logic, right? So, yeah. I'm nervous. I'm thinking about the. Uh, poop in the place story? Yeah, we need to specify one poop story, right? Was that Caleb that, that did that? <laughs> I, mean, I don't remember. Let's just say it was Caleb. I just yeah, we're not going to find that, yeah. Is there any evidence that he seasoned the, the poop? Yeah, so that would really give up in the plate, right? So we kind of left that be. Um, again, I, you hear that statement, it is exceptionally hard to believe. Um, we're actually, they didn't want, obviously, they want to suspend a kid. He didn't like hurt. I mean, he hurt a lot of people. He didn't hurt anybody. So they ended up actually, um, they agreed. He got like six weeks, like a month and a half of like community service at the school. He literally was just like cleaning the school for like six weeks. Um, but honestly, it just made him like slightly more famous. <laughs> What's your best? Um, <laughs>
explain. But can you talk about maybe an instance in which, like, <laughs> we have the same question. <laughs> Was very rewarding and made it feel like, oh, the poop on the playroom. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, so again, I mean, I, I, I like thought this up just as like a totally goof thing. I really, I mean, I, I spent seven years teaching, and I, I, I like didn't leave teaching really disgruntled, right? I mean, I didn't leave like I gotta get out of here. I'm exhausted. I hate this. I, I really kind of felt the opposite. Um, I think a lot of people hit on this. You feel like you're almost stuck in that profession. Like you, you hit this peak really early. There's not really mobility. You're, you're, you're just kind of trapped, and that's a like a really, really Massive shame. Um, I, I mean, what like one of the biggest things that comes to mind is just one in one particular kid who I don't know. It, my wife's a blue, by the way. She's like. <laughs> Undocumented kid, his parents were like working their asses off to try to make sure he could take care of himself in a pretty rough school district, trying to do everything absolutely right, and and it's like just like the standard American education story. It, if he was in the right scenario, right, like things would pan out way different. The kid just needed what I would or what we would consider probably really basic assistance. Some things like fill out a fast so what does it really mean to write a decent essay and all this kind of stuff. Um, he ended up getting himself into like a collegiate program that um, I don't even think was like he probably totally undersold where he was at. He just felt like, you know, he's around enough smart people and like that's what they did. Um, but like, I don't think he totally has embraced or understood exactly like what that means for not just him, but like the future lineage that is gonna come from there, right? Like that is a, and even just to like be around that kid, whether or not like directly involved in helping the process, or whatever, like being around people like that is so inspiring and it's really shocking to have that go on, but also <laughs> have kids who I mean like, yeah, as a, mid 20s, early 30s person to like see people like that and be, I don't know, really moved and honestly motivated. Um, I don't know, teaching is a wildly important profession. So I'm, I'm glad I'm here. But I